Yeah, that, that's interesting because you 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 don't shiver inside the water, but you get out of the water and you start to shiver, right? Exactly. Yeah. What happens there? Yeah. What well, what's happening is that when you're in the water, you have the vasoconstriction, mm -hmm. and then when you get up from the water, you you dilate your vessels again, right? The cold water you are inside when you're yeah. in the water, that makes your blood go into the core. Yeah, it gets into the core where it's hot. Hot. Yeah. Exactly. Protecting your inner organs, your vital organs. That's yeah. the main thing, right? And then when you vasodilate again, you go up from the water, right? Then the warm water from your core starts to move outside to your mm -hmm. limbs. So out to your peripheral tissue. But this tissue is so cold now. The warm blood from your from your core gets outside. Gets outside. To, to the cold to the cold skin. tissue. Yeah. To the cold tissue. Okay. And cools down the blood. Mm -hmm. But then it runs back again to your core. And now it's starting to cool down your core. Yeah. And when you cool down your core, there are receptors in the core telling the brain what temperature you are. And it gets a little bit surprised by the fast decrease in temperature of that blood now. And you start and, to shiver. And it, because, yeah, exactly. The temperature sensor then says, oh my God, you're getting too cold. The brown fat cannot keep up the temperature. Let's get in the 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 muscles to yeah. help so these two organs are helping each other to increase the temperature in the body and the shivering is definitely a good thing doing that because that's gonna keep you away from being hypothermic 